Hello everybody, Dr. John Waterhouse. Welcome to Product of the Month. Well, this month we actually have a very special Product of the Month to talk about because there are four versions of this product. And the product is Myos Canine Muscle Building Formula that helps build muscle and prevent muscle loss through atrophy. But before we get in and start talking about this great supplement, I want to step back and just talk about full disclosure. So this is a product that came to my attention about two years ago when I read first a white paper on how this supplement could work and the fortitropin in this product affecting the myostatin pathways in the body. And I got really excited. And so I ordered my own set and I've recommended it to my clients for the last two years. Here's an old package of one of the products that I purchased. Then I reached out to the company four months ago and said I would like to review the product for product of the month. And they shipped me more of the Myos in its old formula or old label plus three other versions of the product that has just launched. So we then have the VET Strength version, and we'll be going through and talking about each one of these and what's the difference between the VET Strength and the other new versions. We then have a Green Lip Muscle version. We'll talk about what that does. And then I'm really excited, drum roll, drum roll, for the feline version because there is notoriously nothing out there for our feline patients and so this gives us a great supplement that can help our feline patients as they age and help them retain muscle and fight off muscle atrophy but we'll talk more about that later. So the company was very gracious in sending me samples of those products so I could do a three and a half month trial with their products of each of their different SKUs of product lines. So I did not purchase those products, they were sent to me, and then I did a three and a half month trial. We're using those products with my own pets and also patients' pets as well. So coming around for full disclosure, I've been so impressed with how the trial has gone, and we'll talk a lot about that in this uh, video, that we now stock the products in our store. So full disclosure, I've been using this product, recommending it for the last two years. The products for the trial were donated and supplied by the company very graciously, and we are now selling the products in our store. So enough of that, let's put that aside. Let's get in and talk about what these products are, what the different SKUs are and how they work, how we've used them in the three and a half month trial, what are the goods, the bad that we have seen putting animals through these or on this product for the last three and a half month, and then talk about where we're going with this product. So first off, let's work through what the different four SKUs of this product are. So we have the original formula. And this is available on Amazon. And so this is the original Fortitropin formula of Myos. And so this is what has been out for the last two and a half years that I've been using. But since then, they've brought out their veterinary strength version. And this is a, a version that is only available through veterinarians. And the difference between this and their original formula is the addition of BCAs. And BCAs are branch-chained fatty acids that are there to help build muscles. And so that's the difference between the vet strength and the normal strength is the addition of, of BCAs to their formula. Then there was great research that came out of New Zealand to do with the green lip muscle. Um, amino acids and the um, glucosamine chondroitin findings of the green-lipped muscle out of New Zealand. So they have added the green-lipped muscles to their Myos formula to add some glucosamine chondroitin 
and some omega-3 fatty acids to their formula. So now this is a brand new formula. It's just launched with the additional green lip muscles to the myos or the fortitropin formula. And then rounding it off, number four, that I am so excited for our feline patients. This is something we can give now to our feline patients. And this is the same as the original Myos formula. So it's 100% fortitropin. And there was a two-week study done at the University of Florida. And I want to make sure I get this correct. Professor Chen Gilmore. And they took cats and they fed them one, two, and four milligrams a day of the Myos feline 100% fortitropin formula. And it, they showed that they reacted very well to this and they tolerated it very well. So this is great because now it gives us something for our feline partners and our feline patients that really we didn't have before. Because the cats aren't the same as dogs and a lot of companies treat cats like dogs but they're not they're their own species they have their own idiosyncrasies when it comes to the ability to absorb certain certain nutrients they have their own digestive requirements and so there's a specific formula formulated for our feline patients is fantastic so let's talk about what we've done in the last three and a half months we have, I believe, so much in this product after reading the studies. And we have a double-blinded study out of Kansas State University that we'll be talking about as well. But I enrolled my own pets in this study and patients' pets as well. And so this is not a double-blinded study. This is my own evaluations of watching my own pets go through this and my patients go through being on this supplement for the last three and a half months. So when I take my own pets, I enrolled my cat into for the feline supplement because she is 18 year old domestic short hair. And I also enrolled my nine year old German Shepherd in the study as well. For the vet strength formula. For the normal strength formula, I enrolled two of my patients as well and also put another patient on the green lip muscle formula. So as I said, this is not a double blinded control study. There is no randomization in this. This is just an antidotal review of how uh, my pets and patients performed and went through with being on this supplement for the last three and a half months. But before we get on and talk about what we saw with my own pets and my patients on this supplement, let's roll back. Let's roll back and talk about what this supplement is. So fortitropin refers to 100% fertilized chicken, egg or yolk to be more specific powder that's pasteurized in a patented process so it retains all the proteins and nutrients that is found in this product and so fortitropin has been shown to have an amazing effect on building muscle through the mTOR pathway and this is the pathway that regulates how we put on muscle in the body it also has an inhibitory effect or a down regulatory effect on the ubiquitin pathway. And this is the pathway that actually causes muscle loss. And so really the company likes to say it puts the brakes on when you have high levels of myostatin in the blood, it puts on the brakes for you to be able to produce muscle. And so if we can down regulate the amount of myostatin in the blood, we can then upregulate the body's ability to produce muscle. And that's pretty much how this incredible supplement works. So by affecting the mTOR pathway, we're now building muscles while putting the brakes and lowering the levels of myostatin in the blood to stop down the degeneration of muscle through the ubiquitin pathway. I know that's a lot in technical terms, but it's really, you just need to know that this 
blocks the ability of the body or lowers the level of myostatin in the blood to put the brakes on the body's non-ability to put on muscle, but also slows down the body's ability to absorb muscle that we see when we have geriatric or older patients. Muscle. And we see as we age, myostatin levels rise. So we know that we then get sarcopenia or cachexia. And they're two big medical no terms. Sarcopenia means loss of muscle mass outside of disease. And we know that we age, we, our requirements for synthesis of amino acids go up. But our body's ability to generate or synthesize these amino acids goes down. And so this is the perplexing situation that we get. We lose the ability to build muscle. We lose the ability to produce amino acids as we get older. And also now our levels of myostatin rise in the body. So while we're having troubles building and maintaining muscle. Cachexia is a different syndrome. Cachexia, and these are terms that are always thrown around and my clients ask me all the time. So I thought I'd explain it a little bit. So cachexia is loss of muscle mass secondarily to a disease. So if we know that if a patient has cancer, kidney disease, liver disease, they lose muscle mass, they lose, they become really skinny. And this is cachexia, and this is really an acute onset of muscle loss. And when we see it, we start to think of underlying disease. Sarcopenia is a natural evolution of aging. It is a slow process of muscle loss. So as we get older, we get more lean, we, get, we can't build that muscle mass as we used to in our younger years. We actually lose the ability of regeneration, the thickness of the muscle, the axons in the muscle that fire our neurological pathways to actually tell our muscles how to move. All those things are part of the aging process. And that is sarcopenia. And that's why this is really exciting for what it can do in aging patients, but also patients that are suffering neurological syndromes, acute injuries, post-surgical injuries, because we know that, say, use TPLO, for example, because that's what this study looked at, and we'll talk about that later. It is a orthopedic procedure that you don't use that limb afterwards. We know if you don't use it, you lose it. And so our post-surgical patients are notorious for having muscle atrophy, and that's the loss of muscle mass through disuse. And so this supplement is really exciting for what it can do for one, disuse atrophy after surgery, neurological atrophy, that's loss of for intervertebral disc disease, for degenerative myelopathy. And the jury's still out how that works in that, but we're seeing great um, research coming down the pipeline for neurologic or neurogenic injury. It's great for our sarcopenia or aging patients. And then for cachexia or patients that are losing muscle mass due to renal or liver disease, we'll talk about why this actually is a great product for them as well. So let's also, as we're stepping back and talking about this product, step back and talk about where this can be used. We know that in the US market, that 50% of the animals out there, both feline and canine, are over the age of seven. As veterinary, the field advances in medical, orthopedic, and also regenerative medicine, we're now actually increasing the lifespan of our beloved pet companions. So that is fantastic, but also it now comes with its own level of complications because we are now seeing more geriatrics. We're now seeing more senior medicine than we traditionally saw before because our pets are living longer. So now we're seeing geriatric diseases starting to creep up. I like to say degenerative joint disease, osteoarthritis, 
are all things that are now becoming more prominent out there with our pets because they're living longer. That's fantastic. But we now need to think about the lifespan of our pet, protecting those joints all the way along, giving them the help, the supplements that they need. And so this is where something like this is really going to be a game changer on how we look to help our beloved pet companions age gracefully. Because we know that in sports medicine, as our pets age, we get sarcopenia come in, they're losing the ability to produce the amino acids, the L-carnitine, CoQ10 to put on muscle mass. We're also seeing the level increase of myostatin in the body. So now the body's actually absorbing the muscle, attacking those muscles and breaking down that muscle. When we're doing that around joints, and we're starting to see osteoarthritis because we know that 90% of cats over the age of seven have osteoarthritis in at least one joint in their body. And that's the same with our canine companions as well. We know that for giant breed dogs, they are classified as geriatric after the age of six. So we're talking about our Great Danes, our Bernese Mountain Dogs, um, there, after the age of six, we start to think of them as geriatrics. Um, large breed dogs, our German Shepherds, our Labradors, that's usually around the 11 year age mark, nine to 11 years, depending how big they are. And then our small breed dogs like our Chihuahuas, they're usually around the 13 to 15 year age mark, we're starting to think that they're geriatric. So for our large breed and our giant breed dogs, seven to nine years of age is quite early on. And so they're losing muscle mass. While they're losing muscle mass, they're losing the supportive structure around that joint. We're now getting more joint laxity, more movement of that joint. We're getting thinning of the cartilage. We're getting loss of hyaluronic acid. That's these oil or the viscous material in the joint. It's almost like goo, but it's really slippery and has great viscosity. And that's what allows the bones to glide against each other. As we're losing that, that's becoming more watery. As we're losing the muscle around those joints, those joints are moving more, the pain level, the degeneration of that joint increases. So now the joints are getting more painful. They don't want to put weight on it. We're getting hip dysplasia, elbow dysplasia, for examples. They don't want to use that limb. They're not putting weight on it. We're now getting muscle atrophy. That muscle atrophy causes more laxity in the joint. The joints move more, they hurt more. And it's that ever spiral going down. If we can introduce a supplement that helps lower the level of myostatin, helps then the body produce muscle. In the VEP version, we're actually giving the amino acid chains to help boost the production of muscle fibers. We're building more soft tissue structure around that joint. That joint is now being held in place, supported. We're not getting that joint laxity anymore. They're now feeling better. They want to place weight on it. They want to move on it. They're now building more muscle on it because it's like going to the gym and doing arm calls or squats. You're now building muscle. You're using it and we're getting that spiral. I call it the rocket of success. And that's shooting up and now the, your pets are feeling better. They want to use that limb. They're no longer painful and going down the drain I call of pain. And so this supplement is really a game changer because we've seen that over the last three and a half months with my pets and the patients on this supplement. They have put on muscle. They actually have become leaner. They've lost weight in one instance. Their attitude has increased. And we'll talk about this really important, the side effects that have been fantastic for being on this supplement. But they've been out. They're doing things that they haven't done before because we're building that soft tissue structure, that supporting structure, structure not only around those joints, but elsewhere in the body. We're not just building muscle on the affected limb. We're building muscle everywhere. And that has been the most striking thing that I've seen in this 
is the change in body shape, body condition with the patients and my pets on these supplements. So let's talk before we go in and we go talk more about what I've seen with my pets and my patients on these supplements. Let's step back and talk about how you would use these supplements, how you would watch your pet on these supplements and what you need. And so let's talk about pieces of equipment that you need, really that should be part of your weekly regime when it comes to your pet. And the number one thing you should have is a calendar. A calendar is so important for what we can do with our pets. Every week you should be using one of these. And this is a scale and your pet and be weighing them to see how they're going. All the way through puppies in our puppy program, we talk about weighing the puppy twice a week. So you can be measuring and seeing any fluctuations as it's happening because weight is a great predeterminer of disease. So here we have a calendar. So for the last three and a half months, I have been with my clients writing down every Sunday measurements. So we'll open the calendar. So we started back in June. So here are the measurements. And every Monday, every Sunday, we weighed the pets and I wrote down on the calendar, I wrote down their name, I wrote down their weight, I wrote down their body condition score. So with body condition score, there's two scales that are used out in the veterinary profession. There's the five point scale and the nine point scale. So let's have a look at both scales because they do different things. So here on the left hand side is a graphic explaining the five point scale and that's from the Association of Pet Obesity Prevention. And on the right hand side, we then have the Nestle Purina nine point scale. So you can just see that there's, I prefer the nine point scale because there's more choice that you can have and you can actually drill down to more specific where they are on that scale compared to a five point scale. So when we're looking at the five point scale, and it doesn't really matter which scale you use, as long as you're using a scale to then be able to track what the body condition score of your pet is. So on the five point scale, we'd like my patients to be about 2.5 on the scale is the ideal weight. On the nine point scale, I like as I've said before, body condition score between four and five. And that's really what we're looking for on this scale. But as you can see, there's really great descriptions, especially on the nine point scale, of what you need to look for so you can work out where your beloved pet or your patient fits on that scale. Also, we have the World Small Animal Veterinary Association, they have their own scale, and that's a nine point scale as well. And that also has great descriptions of what you need to be looking for, but also the visual descriptions of the pictures are great. These scales also are available in feline versions also. So I really encourage you, if you are looking at your cat, this is a great way to scale uh, your cat. So what do we need to do and think about when we're doing body condition scoring? Well, there's really three places I like to, to look and take measurements. Well, I look at the ribs. You wanna be able to feel the ribs, not see the ribs. The spine, you wanna be able to feel your spine. So in this photo, you can see the thumbs, that's just rubbing up and down so you can feel the individual facets of the spine and at the base of the tail. These are the three areas that I mainly look for when I'm body condition scoring. Here are also, people ask me all the time, here are the three links then to where you can then find these charts at the World Small Animal Veterinary Association, Purina, but also the Association for Pet Obesity Prevention. And also these sites have great resources as well to give you information, tools and tricks to help get weight off your pet if you want to get them to a more appropriate body condition score.
So as I said before, I prefer the nine point scale because I find that is more um, diagnostic, but also each point on that scale represents 10% of their body weight. Where the five point scale I find is a little less accurate when I'm dealing with clients and trying to educate clients about body condition scoring and weight control in their beloved pet companions. So for example, if we look at a dog that's three out of nine on the body condition score, that means that they're 20% underweight. And we have equally amount, the same amount of problem with underweight as we do with overweight because they have their own set of conditions when it comes to joint and muscle loss. So if they're underweight, it's like not having enough soft tissue around that joint as well as damaging as being overweight. And that's why we like to keep our patients around four to five on the scale. You'll see I've put a percentage on the side to make it really easy. So we know that a three body condition score is 20% underweight. So if the dog then is a nine out of nine on the scale, so morbidly, morbidly, morbidly obese, at 40%, that's 40% over what they should be in their body weight. And hopefully this gives you an insight into some tricks, but also an idea of what to do and how to score body condition scores. So when you're going through and weighing your pet and working everything now together like pieces of a jigsaw, you now have the tools and the resources to get your pet to a appropriate body condition score while we're building the muscle with miles and exercise. So weight is really important and you should get in the habit of weighing your pet every the same time every week. So I just do a Sunday afternoon. I will pick up my cat. I will step on the scales. Okay, let's or let's step back and talk about how you actually use a set of scales. Because people will think I have a giant breed German Shepherd or a giant um, Great Dane. How can I put my pet on one of these? I can't lift them up. How does that work? And so with smaller pets, it's really easy. You put the scales on the floor. You step on the scale first without your pet. I know this is very, very scary. You step, step down. You can even put your blinkers on. You look, you write that weight down on a piece of paper. You can burn that later on. Then you go and you pick up your pet. If it's a small pet like a chihuahua or medium-sized pet, we never want you to hurt yourself. So as long as you can pick up your pet comfortably, I always recommend doing this because you get a better quality result. Then you pick up your pet, you step back on the scales. You look down, you write down that figure, and then you subtract that figure from your weight figure, and that gives you the weight of your pet. Now, this is just very broad. It's not super scientific, but it's just giving you benchmarks that you can track over time. If you have a giant breed or a large breed dog that you can't lift up, then you buy two scales. One for the front limbs, one for the high limbs. And so you'll turn the scales on. Electronic scales work better than the traditional weight scales because you get a digital reading that will lock into place. You put the front limbs on the scale and the front scale and then you put the hind limbs on the back scale and you wait for them to stand steady and you'll see the two digital displays light up. And then you write down those two digital displays, add them together, and that gives you a rough indication of the general weight of your large or giant breed dog. Then we take that into consideration with body condition score. And body condition scores are really important because that allows us to gauge how really overweight our pets are. Because we know that 50% of pets out there in the United States are morbidly obese. And so when I mean morbidly obese, when we look at the scale, and so this is a scale that we use, Purina has a great one to nine scale. And, also, and so we want to then work with the scale to get our pet back to a four and a half to five out of nine on this scale. 
And the scales were really great because they had detailed descriptions of what to look for because the number one thing we want to do is get our pets back to a five out of, or four and a half to five out of nine on the scale because we know for every additional pound of weight, that equates to four additional pounds of shear force going through that joint. So if we use the example of a 10 pound overweight Labrador Retriever, I just use 10 pounds because it's easy mass for me to do in my head. And so that equates to 40 pounds of additional shear force going through that joint. And we know that we have 50% of the population out there are over the age of seven in canines. And we know that 50% of the population out there are morbidly overweight. So we know that we are setting our beloved pets up for failure because we're now overloading those existing joints in our geriatric patients or pets that have lost that muscle mass, that have lost that integrity, have increased joint range of motion, increase or loss of cartilage thickness, loss of the lubricant in that joint, the hyaluronic acid, so that equates to more pain. More pain means more dysfunction, not wanting to use it, more loss of muscle mass, and that ever circle down the drain in pain. And so if we can get our patients or our pets back to at least a five out of nine on this scale, this is a healthy body weight. This means the joints aren't being overloaded by excess weight. And then a product like this can actually get in and do its work. But we also saw over the last three and a half months that one of the patients going through this was overweight. It was a six and a half out of nine on the body condition score. And so we saw over the three and a half months, and we're just gonna talk about this specific patient. And so we saw that they actually lost weight in the first zero week to eight weeks. And this, and then they actually plateaued and they put on weight. But when they're putting on weight, they put on muscle. They're not putting on fat because we know muscle weighs twice as heavy as fat. So as we got them down to a body condition score, about five and a half out of nine. They then lost that weight, they then plateaued. They didn't lose any more weight, then they started to put on weight. And But we then saw in this other table that we're now gonna talk about, muscle condition score. Muscle to bone to fat. And so in the body condition score, they then transferred from fat to muscle. And so they became leaner. They actually became more energetic. And we'll talk about some testimonials at the end. But the clients were beside themselves with what has happened with their pet. Just being on this supplement and changing nothing else in their diet, their exercise regime, or any other supplement. So it was really important. The only thing we changed was this. And so they became leaner, they put on muscle, they became harder. You know, when you go to the gym and you start off and you're soft and flubby and then you become harder because you're becoming more dense because fat is blubbery and then muscle is hard and rigid. And as the tissue structure is changed, their body condition score changed, their muscle condition score changed as they lost the fat, the blubber on the surface, and they became more muscular and the tissue density changed. So let's talk about muscle scoring and how it actually is done. So this gives us a great framework for then as we move forward and we talk about body condition score and how muscle condition score and how they both work together to help give a picture of the health of your beloved pet or patient. Other things we talk about is muscle scoring. And the scoring system really is easy. It's normal 
mild, moderate or severe muscle loss. The big question or thing to take home message from this diagram is that your pet can be overweight but still have muscle loss because the overweight nature hides the muscle loss underneath and that's why myos is so great because we're building muscle while we're working on their body condition score to get the weight off them we're actually building muscle underneath. So places to take measurements, the occipital crest, so just at the base of the skull, the spine of the scapula, the thoracic lumbar junction, and then the iliac crest, so that's the hip crest, and I have arrows pointing in the slides you'll see. So the occipital crest is one of the most important places I look for, because that is a muscle that you can't build. And so if they're losing muscle mass in their occipital crest, they're suffering sarcopenia if they're old dogs, but if this is acute and it's happened really quickly, then this is a really good sign of acaxia. There's some underlying issue going on. So our muscle scoring, as I said, we have normal on the right-hand side, and I score that as a zero. Then we have mild muscle, muscle loss, and I score that about a two. And the arrows here are showing all of the areas you want to be looking at when you're evaluating muscle scoring. Then we have a four or a moderate muscle loss, and then a five out of five is severe muscle loss. And this is severe ataxia that we see when there's underlying disease. Uh, malnutrition, starvation would also be a really great um, in abuse cases, example of what a severe muscle lo loss looks like. We also then, I said, I, we have a plus one, abnormalities. And these are really fit elite athlete jogs like greyhounds, like racing whippets that have a plus one body condition score. So if we look at the hind quarters of this whippet, they are just extra muscled. So almost you can call it double muscled and there's actually breeds out there that have double muscle but really fit dogs that really have developed muscles we then created a plus one just to represent, represent those guys because if they then come in and they're a normal body condition score we know that something's happening with them too. So hopefully that gives you a little representation of how and what to look for when you're doing muscle scoring. Other things that we saw through my own pet. So let's now talk about my German Shepherd and my cat. It's very important when we're introducing a new type of supplement to the diet, especially something that we put onto the food because it comes, it's in a lovely yellow powder if I put, and that's the egg. Some dogs have very sensitive stomachs and some dogs take time to get used to these supplements or any introduction to their food. We know with a giant breed dog, we are putting four of these spoons into their food a day. And so we learned that putting four scoops into one meal was too much to start with. But you may have a medium sized dog and that means two scoops a day or a small sized dog and that means one scoop a day. And it's important we think about this because so we saw in my German Shepherd that has a gentle stomach but also in a golden retriever and a Labrador retriever that they had runny stools for the first week. Their body had to get used to this new supplement because we're giving it in a big concentration for all of these whopping spoonfuls in their meal. So tricks of the trade that we learned, we split this up over the two meals. We did two scoops in the morning, two scoops in the afternoon for the first week. For my German Shepherd, it took two weeks for his stools to harden up, doing two scoops in the morning, two scoops in the afternoon. We also found that some dogs are picky eaters. My German Shepherd is a picky eater. Um, Labrador Retrievers, we found Golden Retrievers, aren't picky eaters at all, but my cat is a picky eater as well. So we need to introduce this supplement into their food in different ways. We can sprinkle it onto their food. We can, if you're feeding kibble to your pet, if you're feeding raw diet to your 
pet or you're feeding a combination. We're not getting into a conversation of the pros or cons for that, but people have different attitudes of how they feed their pets. So we found that you can sprinkle this onto the kibble and they will actually eat this and tolerate that very well. Some dogs didn't tolerate that on their kibble. So we then added this to mince meat and we made chews or little mince meatballs that we fed as treats at the feeding time because I also found if I fed them as chews or treats, so little meatballs, on an empty stomach, they got runny stools. If I mix that with feeding them their, their kibble, that gave them a lining in the stomach. The stomach was full and it allowed the supplement to be slowly absorbed instead of absorbed in one big hit. And so they tolerated that a lot better. Also with raw diets, I mixed that in as well and made that into a mash as well. So I was hiding the supplement in the food and that way they tolerated it. Once they got used to it, you could then sprinkle it on the kibble and they'll eat it straight off the kibble. Sprinkle it straight on the raw food, they'll eat it straight off the raw food. Even you can sprinkle it as the supplement on its own and they will eat that as a treat as well. To our cat that are notoriously Fickle eaters. Same thing, had to introduce that into balls of minced meat and balls of raw food to get them used to eating it. Now I can sprinkle it on the raw food and my cat will tolerate that very well and eat that as well. So the really tip for the pro tip, when introducing this supplement, split it into two portions twice a day. Or break it up into, if you do a morning lunchtime, evening feeding, break it up into three times a day because a little dog will only get one scoop. A medium-sized dog will get two to three scoops. A giant breed dog will get four scoops. So it's easy to split it up half a scoop in the morning for a little dog, half a scoop in the afternoon. For the cats, the same thing, half a scoop in the morning, half a scoop in the afternoon because the scoops are actually different sizes. So if we look at the cat scoop, here's the little scoop. Compared to the giant breed dog scoop, we have a big difference, let me get the cameras, in the scoops. But it allows you to measure this out really easily. We found that after two weeks, the runny stools went away. They were tolerating it very well. And then we could get on and give that supplement over the three and a half month stage. Other things we learned as we were going along. That... They will not lose muscle, lose fat in the first four weeks. You'll see no difference in the first four weeks. You'll see no, really, it's that four to 12 week period that you start to see a difference. It takes at least, I tell you, for, for supplements, at least four weeks. But we found that it was about eight weeks before we saw changes in body mass, changes in condition score. We saw more changes in condition score because I asked them to actually stop feeding all the treats and that while they were giving the supplements because for those first two weeks they were giving the supplement as treats to the golden retriever. And so it was losing muscle or losing weight more from calorie restrictions while it was then transferring over onto the supplement. But I saw from zero to eight weeks very little change in muscle mass body condition score. They lost weight and then around the eight to 12 weeks, we started to see weight gain or weight plateauing with weight gain. With the cat, um, the feline, we saw that she actually lost muscle or lost weight, sorry, and then started to put on muscle around that eight week mark. Unfortunately, Full disclosure, we went away for a week and a half and she was then free lib feeding um, on a hopper, so dry food, so she put on weight and her body condition score went up. But her body mass and her fibre diameter and that actually stayed about the same. And so she may have put on size that she's coming off now and we're about four weeks since being back. So she's now back to a good 
round five on the body condition score chart, but she had a little blip on body condition because she was free feeding herself for a week and a half. So I wasn't managing, but I had someone coming in twice a day, sprinkling the supplement onto the food and the free feeder and cleaning out so she was still on the supplement while we weren't here. So other things that we've seen over the three and a half months, in, independent of body condition score changes and muscle mass and weight, we have seen a change in attitude, a change in vitality, an improvement in the mobility and in agility, an improvement in the quality of life, um, especially for severely arthritic patients, the golden retriever, we saw a vitality and improvement in what she could do. She was doing things that she hasn't done for years, going on walks and doing activities that, as I said, she hasn't done for years. We actually saw the lean muscle mass of these geriatric patients improve in size, improve with, I was doing muscle measurements. Um, we'll talk about that later on if people want to know more, but that's more outside the scope of this video. And I saw a change in diameter on my own German Shepherd while I was doing those muscle measurements. I tried to explain to my patients how to do it, but there were too many variables in coat length, change of season, weight, entanglements, knots, things like that, that it really wasn't diagnostic in their muscle measurements. But I did just anecdotal measurements on my German Shepherd of the biceps and the thigh muscle, and I saw increase in muscle mass. But also in short improvement in skin, coat, um, nail growth. Their nails grew because we're giving them the building blocks and but mainly their mental and physiological changing in their attitudes. So if we look at my cat, here's a video of my cat before going on to the supplement. So in the video, we can see Kiki walking up the stairs and she's got severe arthritis in her elbows and shoulders. And so as she's going up the stairs, you can see she's taking one step at a time, one step at a time, and that's classic for cats with shoulder or elbow arthritis because they're always stepping up, stepping up with the same limb. And so she very reluctantly came downstairs and when she would, we would traditionally carry her back up the stairs just because the stairs were an issue. After three and a half months on the feline version of the Maya supplement, we now have her, and this is her running into the house. She's now spending time in the backyard, and you can see she's attacking those stairs a lot differently to what she was in the beginning. And so you can see after three months on the supplement, there was a vast change in how she was going up and down those stairs. Her whole mental capacity has improved. She's now going outside. She's doing things that she hasn't done for years. Traditionally, she sleeps on my desk um, and she has a very sedentary life. Now she's walking around the house, meowing, interacting how she did years ago. She is now the enrichment in her quality of life has been amazing because we now know that we're improving all the muscle mass around her. Her mental, her cognitive, her spinal muscles, we're actually giving the nutrients in that to help support those joints. So where she may be, which we know she has elbow dysplasia because the way she points her feet out and the way you saw her stepping up those stairs, now she's moving fluider because we're building muscle everywhere in the body, not, not just around those joints. We're building the shoulders, the spine, the lumbar, everywhere, the abdominals, everywhere we're supporting building muscle and we're seeing an increase incredible improvement in their quality of life, their ability. You see her bounding up the stairs. She is not being able to do that for years. And so that has been amazing. Oh, another amazing thing, a side note is it's important that if you have other pets in the house, you watch who's eating the food. So we also have a three-year-old pug. And so the pug was eating the cat's leftover food when she would leave away and there was supplement left in the bottom of the bowl. And so over the last three and a half months, we've been looking at our pug going, gee, her body condition 
is changing. Her muscle condition score is changing. She is beefing up. She is becoming a little rock of muscle. I call it little Arnold Schwarzenegger dog. And you can see the improvement in her muscle development around her because she's been eating the cat's mice. And so that phototropin is having a huge effect on her, in her growth. She is just, you know, she's a teenager. She hasn't even hit her adulthood yet. And to see the ability, the muscle development of her has been really incredible. And so, oh, here we go. Here is the cat. Let me bring her in. So if we look at Kiki, so here is Kiki. We have, I know, beautiful girl. Her muscle condition score, her top line, if I stand up and hold her. So along the top, this has really improved in muscle mass. Her coat has become so much greater. Her mandible and her muscles around her head. Before that, she had the old cat, um, atrophy and muscle decline around the head. Now that is all filled in. I'll put her down because she doesn't like being held and especially put up the camera. They just know that they're on camera, but all the temporal muscle has filled in. She no longer has that sarcopenia of the muscle wastage been lost. Her, her whole general body has increased. And this is what the really great thing that this supplement can do, let's get the feline version put up there for the camera shot, is that it's helping the overall structure of our pets. And so when they're wasting in their geriatric as 18 years of age, she is well and truly up there in geriatrics. We've seen a huge improvement in her whole body condition score, but also her muscle condition score and her quality of life. So this then makes us think about what other things that this supplement can be used for. So we're now looking at our geriatric patients. So here's a video of Trapper, and Trapper is our golden retriever. And so a little bit of history on Trapper's uh, background. She is 12 years old. She has bilateral elbow and shoulder uh, dysplasia or degenerative joint disease. We can see in the video that she is pacing. That means both sides, the forward and the hind limbs, are moving in parallel with each other in sync. And this is a sign of weight distribution because of compensatory issues for orthopedic degeneration in the body. We also notice that head bob, and that is classic with shoulder or elbow dysplasia. But we also see she's panting, she's moving very slowly. Trapper would probably only get around the block once or twice a day with multiple rest stops. We see Trapper's body condition scores are probably about a six out of nine. Um, you can't feel her ribs um, through the fat, but she's probably a six out of nine in body condition score. So all we did was introduce the Myos formula to her and we wanted to see what would happen over the three and a half months. Now we look at the next video and this video is three and a half months later and you can see there's a dramatic difference in how Trapper's moving. There's a spring in her step, she's gating along, she's happy to be there. We still have the pacing, we still have the head bod because we can't change the functional changes that happen in the joints when we get degenerative joint disease but we are looking at a happier dog. The owners are ecstatic. They said, John, and the testimonials, Trapper now goes on walks and does trails she hasn't done for years. She's going to the pond and playing. She's wanting to get up and go for walks during the day. Her whole attitude of life has changed that we've seen with Kiki, my cat, as well. She's more fun going. She's up and moving and more responsive. And so they are ecstatic. And all we did was change, was introduce this supplement into her daily regime. And so as we can see, she's now sp not sprinting along, but there is a definite change in from her first video we watched where she's just slowly walking along. She's panting, she's in pain. And this is on supplements and pain medication as well. She just doesn't want to be out 
walking and they have to almost drag her around the block to make her move. Now we have a totally different trapper. Her quality of life has improved and that's the power of this supplement we've seen through all the different my animals and the other patients animals that we've done this trial on their mentation has changed. Their quality of life has changed. Her body condition score has changed. You can't tell because she's now come into a winter plush coat, but she's leaned down. Her muscle, we can now feel her ribs, but her muscle density has changed. And so we started trying to take muscle measurements, but with changing of coat, um, getting matted, changes in the season, we weren't getting consistent diagnostic data. So we just looked at weight. But she has changed in her body conformation. Her, she's become hard. As we talked about the density of fat is soft. She's now becoming harder. We can actually feel her muscles. We now have supportive soft tissue structures around those joints. So that's why I think she's feeling better because we're supporting those joints now with muscle development. But she is a different dog because of this supplement. Plus, we're seeing with our post-operative patients. So here's a study that came out of the University of Kansas, a double-blinded study. So what does that mean? They took 100 dogs, 50 dogs that had, 100 dogs that had TPLO surgery. They split them into two groups. 50 dogs in this group got fortitrophin. 50%, 50 dogs in this group got a placebo supplement. They didn't know. And over three months, they tracked them. And they also found in this study that zero to four weeks, there wasn't much change. Four to eight, we now saw um, changes in mobility, changes in muscle mass, changes in because the dogs that were on the Myos supplement weren't losing muscle mass through atrophy. And that's disuse muscle loss as we talked at the beginning because they've just had surgery. They're not using that leg. While they're not using it, they're losing all that muscle mass. But the dogs on the fortitropin didn't lose muscle mass during, through atrophy. They kept that existing muscle that they had at the time of surgery. The dogs not on the supplement lost muscle mass. They also did blood analysis and they showed that the dogs on the supplement, their levels of myostatin in the blood stayed the same. The dogs that had, had surgery that had muscle wastage or atrophy, their levels went up. And that is that because of degeneration of the breakdown of muscle because of disuse makes the mitotrophin level go up. That jury's still out, but they showed there was increased levels. So that was inhibiting the ability to produce muscle and also exaggerating the body's breakdown of the existing muscle. So we had muscle atrophy. And the study also showed that it takes around 12 weeks to get to a loading dose. And what does a loading dose mean? That is then the mint, that's when you now have enough of the supplement in the bloodstream to have a long-term effect. And that means we can cut the level of the supplement we're giving for their life. Because why would you stop them taking this supplement? Well, let me pick up the canine version. Taking this supplement, if we know it's going to halt and slow down the, the degeneration of muscle in our geriatric dogs. It's going to help convert fat into lean muscle so their body condition score comes down. They take less weight off their joints. We're talking about fat weight. Muscle weight is a different thing, but we know that muscle weight is supporting structure around that joint. We're encapsulating that joint and that soft tissue is holding that joint. So muscle is good. So muscle weight is good. Fat weight is bad because we don't have that muscle, that soft tissue structure around that joint as we talked about earlier in this video. So we get a lot of laxity. So this study was great because it really backed up what we were seeing with our pets and my patients anecdotally as they were going through for the last three and a half months on this supplement that it takes around eight weeks for you to start to see a functional change, but around four weeks for you to start to see a mental and a vibrancy change. So what does this mean 
for long term. Other things you can do is for then our agility dogs, endurance dogs, working dogs. This allows, for, as I saw this firsthand with my pug, she put on muscle. She is now a little bullet and she wants to run and do activities. Her whole endurance level has increased because of muscle is increased, like going to the gym, your cardiovascularly, you can do more. So this is gonna be a game changer for our elite athletes, our working dogs, our endurance dogs, animals that are doing a service out there. These supplements are gonna help them maintain muscle, build muscle, and prevent muscle atrophy when they're injured. Also, when you have more muscle, you actually slow down the ability for injuries. Because we know that with more muscle mass, you actually protect the joints. You can actually get prone to soft injury, tissue injuries, but we're giving through these supplements a way to help speed up the recovery from those soft tissue injuries. And so really the things that this product can do is for our geriatric patients, our post-surgical patients, our neurological patients, so intervertebral disc disease, degenerative myelopathy, anything that causes um, acute injuries, so um, nerve injuries where we're now going to get, or when we're splinting through fractures, things like that, we're getting atrophy. And then also for our endurance dogs, our working dogs to help with endurance, build muscle mass, things like that. This supplement really can help with all of that. And just let me finish on one note. And people have had questions about this, being able to give to patients that are suffering from cachexia. And that's, remember, muscle wastage due to a secondary to a primary disease. Kidney disease, liver disease, or cancer, the three big ones. This has been shown because to be kidney protective. It has very low levels of phosphorus and phosphorus are what we need to think about, especially when we're thinking about our cats. And that's important because my cat, this is my personal cat, I'm putting on these supplements. So that's how much I believe in this supplement, but also I am very strong about do no harm. And so I, I calculated the levels of phosphorus in this supplement to the dose that you needed to give, and it was very minuscule. So that gave me confidence. Also the protein level, I think it's almost one gram of protein. This is just from my memory per scoop. So it's very low, it, almost, it doesn't affect the kidneys and the liver. And so that was why I had confidence to put my cat on this supplement. And so when we have these muscle wasting because of underlying disease, then this is a potentially a really good supplement that we can put in place to help prevent that muscle loss, make them feel better, build muscle because you know with kidney disease and liver disease, they lose that muscle, they, they must feel horrible and they now other things are starting to hurt. We can help promote the soft tissue structure, help them feel better while they're in these end stage diseases. So that's my recap of this supplement. I know I've probably left a lot out because we're here at almost an hour on this review, and but it's really important. So um, feline supplement just came out. You can get that on um, through our site or through Myos Direct. Um, you can buy the Myos original formula on Amazon or through the Myos website as well. Uh, the vet strength formula is only available through your veterinarian. And so um, go contact your veterinarian because that has the BCAs in it and that actually boosts muscle production. So this was specifically designed for veterinarians to give them a product that is a veterinary specific product that they can prescribe for certain conditions. And then the last one, not least, is our green lip muscle formula and this is available on Amazon only. And so I really encourage you to, if you're all considering it, these are going to be a game changer. So let me nestle them up into the, the three of them. So here we are, the Myos family of supplements. Um, this is a new technology, as I said, it's only been out for two years, and this is going to revolutionize how we treat our geriatric, our post-surgical patients, our athletes and our neurological dogs, and a, animals that are suffering muscle wastage disease.
So as I said, if you found this at all informative, please click the like and the subscribe button down below because that helps the algorithm to get this out. Send you also put your comments down below. I try and read all those comments and get back to them, but also it gives me information ideas of if I need to do a second video to answer those questions like I've done on previous products of the month. And then also I wanna thank you for your time because your time is important and I know that you are here wanting to learn about how to better help your patients and your pets. And this is what I do. And this gives me great joy and I get a lot of fulfillment and also hearing the testimonials come in about how we're changing lives and this is what we do it for. So please also send your comments to support at veterinaryteachingacademy.com and I look forward to seeing you on the next product of the month.